from Park Home with Taiwan. Hi, Debbie. Hi. Nice to meet you once a year. <laughs> nice to meet you. I was so surprised to see Wang Ka Wei's in the mood for love is the reference. Such yes. an unexpected link.天真无邪的两个好朋友 Scared. We've met before. Mother. The idea of playing a character that I created 50 years ago, I thought, you know, she's had 50 years of living. Who has she become? What are the experiences that happened to her in those 50 years? And how does that affect the person she is now? And that started to interest me. There's no richer experience in my life than being creative and working with someone who's also creative and we're, we're in this thing together. I think the trick of reimagining iconic movies like Halloween or The Exorcist is taking a, a, some stuff from the original movie and then inventing new things. Well, you could just redo the movie, but not a lot of people would want to see that. Um, so so having, uh, having Ellen in the movie is, is really an amazing way to connect this movie to the first movie, although obviously time has gone by and she's much older and she plays herself X amount, X amount of years later. But I think it really ties the DNA of this movie to the first movie, which I think for me and for the fans is very satisfying. We had fun doing this very difficult material. Yes, more than I'd like. 第一集的中邪小女孩让人不寒而立，这是导演直接加倍挑战。其中最为Olivia甚至是第一次演戏，难度就这么高的演出，导演直接找来当年本尊训练加持，难怪有够会演，有够吓人。And bravo to Lydia and Olivia. One person's child is difficult enough. This time you got two, and they must be in sync not only in action moves but the percentage of craziness. So which scene was the most difficult and took you most time to shoot? Well, um, working with Lydia and Olivia was just an absolute joy. I showed them the movie last night for the first time and showed it to them and their families, and it was an amazing experience, very emotional for all of us. Uh, a lot of hard work, a lot of preparation and rehearsal. When you're doing your, you know, your character research and you're getting into the role, not only do you have to discover who Catherine is, right? So that's one. You've got to know who Catherine is. You've got to know who Demon Catherine is. And then you got to know everything in between. Because obviously there's stages. We have like stage one, stage two, stage three. Like we have all these stages. And so I kind of wanted to create um, so you could clearly see where these stages were, but also they blend together very well in a very true way to, I guess, how it would when you're possessed. Don and Tony help Stuart out from under Victor. The most challenging thing was the exorcism sequence. The climax of the movie was many, many days. They're tied to a chair. It takes two and a half hours to put their makeup on every day. Their entire face is covered in prosthetics, and yet they're able to um, emit these, these spectacular performances, both physically and emotionally. And so it was time consuming. Uh, it took a lot of work, but what, what they were able to achieve was pretty phenomenal. I'm really proud of them. The narrative is coming out of here, 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 here. And how did Linda help for this? And so Linda laid the groundwork and talked about her experience. It was amazing. Um, I took the two young actresses out to where Linda lives and, and we sat down for hours and spoke about her experience and, and what tools that she could tell us to protect them and their process and, and our production to make it a, 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 you know, a safer place psychologically for these very talented young actresses. And then also tools to face the world when when their friends at school or their family might see this movie and have a particular reaction, what's that going to be like? And, and um, we don't know, but it was great to have Linda's perspective.
We know that some strange things happened during the production 15 years ago, and this time Olivia Munn took her for a blessing. How about you? Did you have your own emulate with you all the time, or rituals you must do things before or during shooting a film like this? Well, it was it was really fun. We we talked a lot about the experience that we were about to embark on, the darkness that we would face in production, and the themes and subject matter and performances. Um, that go to f some very difficult, dramatic places. And so we had a, a number of spiritual coordinators, spiritual advisors, and, uh, and got blessings for the set. Sometimes we'd bring in a priest or a priestess. Sometimes we'd burn sage on set and trying to keep all the negative energy off the set so that we could maximize the optimism and the creative productivity of the, uh, of the amazing, talented actors, the cast that we had. And when I saw the film, I kept noticing the wallpaper of Victor's home. Dad? And when I read the production of the production design, I was so surprised to see Wang Ka Wei's In the Moon for Love is the reference. Find yes. an unexpected link. Uh, yeah, you know, I always find weird little visual references, and for the art department, for some reason, the, the lines, the geometry, the color, the lights um, of the home and in, uh, in, in, in the mood for love, because you never really get a clear geography of what it is. You don't really understand that house. And so we, we constructed a house for our set that doesn't really make any sense in, in uh, an inspiration based on Wong Kar Wai's film. <laughs> and there are so many Easter eggs in the film and items about character in the original film. And you have to look and listen closely for them. And any particular one you are dying for the fans to notice? Well, the one that I know they'll never notice is, but it's in there, is there is a, 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 a couch from the original film that was, that was upholstered with a white fabric in the original film. And when they wrapped the movie, Ellen Burstyn was moving into an empty apartment and took the couch to her house and put it in her, in her house. And so when I was talking to her about the role, she told me, oh, and I still have the couch from the house. And, and so we shipped that couch to her home. So Chris McNeil has that sofa in her home uh, at her beachside residence with a new upholstery. Wow, that's great. And another surprise is knowing the demon Lamas 2 is against the original demon Pasusu. I guess that's where the story and sequels get interesting. It's something you know that I studied uh, very little uh, about uh, demonology, but one thing I do know is those uh, a handful of demons that were, we were going to integrate into our story. And so that was a, a fun, uh, fun path in our research in, in writing the film is is which demon are we going to choose and and so uh, Lamashtu and and Lamashtu's relationship with Pazuzu from the original film is fun to read about I, I, I encourage everyone to look into it One girl lives one girl dies Can you please finally say hi to all your fans in Taiwan and give them your best advice while watching the film? Um, well, I'm, I'm, it's, it's an honor to make a movie uh, that's going to play in Taiwan. I'm thrilled. I hope people see it in the theater. Bring all your friends, buy some popcorn, have a good time. They do think it'll be scary as hell, literally. <laughs> and people who like to be scared ought to go see this movie. You know, when you just walk out of the theater and you like, 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 like shaking like, all that. Yeah. And I hope it scares the pants off of you. Yes, definitely. <laughs>